Welcome to Croxley Green Baptist Church Holy Week Reflection. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Jesus' sorrow for Jerusalem. At that time some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely... No prophet can die outside Jerusalem. (laughs) Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were not willing. Look. Your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Even with all the effort to give us good news stories along with the bad, what we're hearing and seeing around us makes us heartbroken. When we hear of patients dying alone and relatives grieving alone because they are isolating, there is something in us that wants to weep and mourn for what is happening. It's tempting to ask what on earth God is doing letting these dreadful things happen as though he is safely tucked away somewhere, nicely immune from not only the virus but the grief as well. And of course that is not where God is when we suffer. Jesus, we are told, was often heartbroken in response to the suffering of people around him. When he was exhausted and spent and just wanted to sneak away with his disciples for some well-earned rest, he was still churned up with compassion for the crowd that wanted yet more of him. When his dear friend Lazarus dies, knowing that he was going to raise him from the dead, he is still completely emotionally wrung out at Mary and Martha's grief and suffering. He stands weeping with them at the side of the tomb, not distant. And in this passage in Luke, we read of Jesus' heart breaking for a whole city. This city where he knows he's going to be killed, full of people who will cry, crucify him in such a short time. This place where he has been performing miracles and healings and all he gets is death threats. This is the place that breaks Jesus' heart. He literally longs to gather them in his arms and protect them like a mother hen. If you've ever had to watch a precious child make a disastrous choice, then you will know something of Jesus' pain and heartache here. Watching as someone you love makes a decision that you know will hurt and damage them is incredibly painful. You are powerless to force them to change their mind. Helpless as you watch the inevitable unfold. This is how Jesus feels as he looks over Jerusalem. And sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking that Jesus is the loving, caring face of God. But what about the Old Testament God? Do we see a heartbroken God there? Well, Genesis chapter 6 tells us exactly how God felt when his precious children started going their own way and living in the brokenness that would require the rescue we remember at Easter. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. God's heart 
has been deeply troubled and broken since the day he cried out to Adam and Eve in the garden, where are you? This broken heartedness is what brought God to us in human form and what nailed him to a cross. It has been the main emotion in his relationship with us and yet he doesn't walk away from us. Rather, his death for us offers us a different alternative. There is room for joy again when his precious children come home. And if you are feeling broken hearted this Easter, then perhaps you are closer to the heart of God than ever before. If we ask him to show us the world as he sees it, we should expect to be shocked at the depth of emotion that that view stirs up in us. It is not a comfortable place. And we might as well echo Jesus' words and long to gather those who are suffering in our arms. But broken hearts change things. Hearts that break with God's heart know there is also joy on the way. They know that love that weeps is also love that heals and reaches out. So maybe don't be afraid to be broken hearted this Easter. It may well be the best way to feel close to God as we share his response to our situation and pain. <laughs>